Welcome to the ABR Adaptive Control Demo. The purpose of the demo is to show the potential impact of neuromorphic control on the performance of state-of-the-art robotics. The neuromorphic controller we have developed is more flexible than standard controllers because it continuously adapts to unknown perturbations. In short, it learns how to make itself move better in an unfamiliar environment, like biological systems can. In fact, this controller is based on the function of a part of the brain called the cerebellum, which helps animals learn and fine-tune motor behavior. The adaptive controller that we will be showing is always learning, and we have proven mathematically that the learning is stable. Consequently, we can guarantee improvement over a non-adaptive controller. It's worth noting that the vision system is a deep neural network that we have built for finding objects. However, implementing the control system using deep learning is infeasible because that approach requires thousands of trials to improve performance, whereas here we would like rapid improvement with real-time experience. To begin, let us quickly introduce the different pieces of hardware we are using for the demo. We're using the Intel RealSense camera for depth sensing to determine the position of objects in 3D space and for object recognition. The Jacko 2 arm is a low-cost arm designed by Canova to be used by disabled clients to help them be more independent. The fact that it is low-cost means that the motors have more undesirable properties like stiction and noise, compared to more expensive arms. However, the Jacko 2 does allow force control as opposed to just position control like most commercially available arms. This is important for robots that are interacting with people, as we'll see. The top inset shows a VREP model being driven by the same position information as the robot to help visualize target locations and arm performance. The middle inset is showing neural activity in the adaptive controller. The bottom inset will show a video feed from the vision system. And finally, the last inset indicates which controller is being used at various points in the demo. The compute hardware we're using is running the visual system on the GPU of one computer and running the controller on the CPU of the other computer. Ideally, both of these would be replaced with low-power neuromorphic hardware that can run the same algorithms far more efficiently while improving performance. The first part of our demonstration shows the difference between current standard control methods, state-of-the-art compliant control methods, and adaptive control methods that ABR has developed. These three different controllers are best understood by interacting with them while the robot is attempting to maintain a target location. So first we'll see industry standard control. This kind of control is position-based, meaning that the controller drives the arm to a specified set of joint angles. The controller will apply as much force as needed to move each motor to the target angle. This is accurate and repeatable, however it's unsafe because the controller will try to push the arm through any obstacles, such as a table or person, along the way. This can damage users, the environment, and the arm. Safer control methods have been developed which use force control instead of position control. In force control, the controller specifies how much force to apply to each joint to move to a desired target. By using only as much force as necessary to move the arm, the system becomes compliant and safer to interact with. Force control is what all biological systems use, as it is more efficient and more forgiving than position control. In general, an agent cares about its physical interactions with the environment, and forces tell the agent what kind of interactions it's having. However, for standard force control methods, with an unexpected load, the controller is no longer effective. Next, we'll give the robot a two pound weight. As you can clearly see, it fails here, and it can't reach the target. In general, compliant controllers need to have a good model of the arm and all of the forces on it in order to control the arm well. If we remove the load, and the model that the controller has of the arm is once again accurate, then it can resume effective control of the arm. The same kind of compliance is available in our adaptive controller. As with the compliant controller, it's using force control, allowing safe interaction with people. In fact, when we start the controller, it has exactly the same model as the non-adaptive version. However, the difference becomes clear when the two pound weight is reintroduced. The error in the adaptive controller is smaller, and more importantly, you can see it learning about this new force. It slowly moves itself back to the target location. Notice the neural activity on this screen. Changes in the neural activity indicate how the controller is learning to account for the unknown dynamics introduced by the weight, allowing the arm to move to the target. The spiking neural network is updating its connection weights to improve the model of the arm. Even with the adaptation, the arm remains compliant. It has simply learned to increase the forces applied to the motors just enough to compensate for the effects of gravity and stiction. 
This concludes part one of our adaptive control demo. Please see parts two and three for more advanced behaviors.